Westmore had found out that there was another Westmore in jail. So he was like, hey, I should go talk to him. So he does. And then he's like, hey, I should write a book about our experiences. And this is how the story begins. Chapter 1. Wes remembers that one time he was playing with his sister and he hit her on the head. And his mom got very angry. He is confused as to what the problem was. Turns out his mom had a bad experience. She came to the U.S. from Jamaica. Then she met Bill, married him, and had a kid, Nikki, Westmore's sister. But drugs, alcohol, and domestic violence wasn't cool for her. So she left him and took Nikki. She then married his father, who was a successful radio host. Back to Wes's room. His father comes up the stairs and calms down his mother. Remember, Wes, always respect women. The father later trips because he wasn't feeling good, Mr. Stark, and fell down the steps. He was taken to the hospital but didn't get the proper help he needed. So he died, and it was the hospital's fault. Later, Bill stopped paying his child support. (laughs) The other Wes is preparing to go to his grandparents' house. He goes into his mom's room and she's like, I lost my Pell Grant. I'm no longer going to school. She then dropped out. She had a dream of leaving Baltimore. But spoiler alert, that didn't happen. Mary, his mom, tells him that college is important. So they move to his grandmother's house. There, he meets his dad, who's an addict banging on the door. And after, never met him again. Chapter 2. This is two years later. The other Westmore is talking to his brother Tony when he asks where their mom is. Tony is pretty protective of Wes and tells him to take school more seriously. The other Wes doesn't and starts making the bacon through drugs. Their mom takes them to Northwood to escape Cherry Hill. Instead of playing the arm ball, he starts playing football. He pays less attention to his academics and takes his mom's money. One time, he goes out to play with Woody and some other kids. He gets in a fight and another kid punches him. Instead of running home and crying, he does what any reasonable person would do. Go up to that same kid and pull a knife on him. Wes and Woody both get thrown in jail. On the other hand, Westmore's mom, Joy, is sleeping on the couch to, you know, defend from the bad people. She decides that moving back to her parents' basement with her kids is best. So they travel to the Bronx. The grandparents were immigrants that came to the U.S. from a college education. Wes would often go play b-ball with his fellow American. The area was destroyed by drugs, poverty, and arson. The b-ball court had different types of people, from regular students to those hooded figures that would go up to him and say, Hey kid, uh, you want to buy some drugs? But they were all cool with each other. Chapter 3 Wes Moore is sent to Riverdale, which is a private school. He meets Justin, and they're the only two black kids at the school. His mom works three jobs so that he could go to school. When the friends ask how it is, he tries to act too cool for school, and that he was suspended and stuff. They laugh, but all of a sudden, some hooded guy comes up to them and asks, Hey kids, got some money for drugs? They laugh at him as well, and so he walks away. He tells them the rule of the streets don't fit at his school, just like him. Once even, a fight happened between Riverdale and the neighborhood kids. His grades go down because he is excluded, but his friend Justin shows him that he can and so should he. He thinks his mom might send him to military school, but he said, Caribbean households treat boys as princes. I'd like to see her try. The other Westmore moves neighborhoods and Mayor Kurt Shamok is elected the first African-American mayor and addresses the drug epidemic. Wes looked up to Tony because of his cool clothes and his shoes from all the drugs he's been selling. He asked his mom and really wanted to try them, so he said, nah, drugs are for losers and I'm not a loser. He later plans a cookout but finds some weed in his mom's room and said, hey, why not have weed at the cookout instead? So they do, drink and get some Chinese food. When he comes home, Mary and her boyfriend realize he has been drinking. Chapter 4 A few years later, after Wes started working as a lookout, Tony asks him where he got the money for the new shoes he got. Wes was like, yo dog, I'm the most popular DJ around, Uh, ask mom, she'll tell you. 
Then Tony got mad and he took his spot, so he started beating him up. The mom breaks up the fight stop, and stop. knows that they were both hooded drug dealers. She kept telling herself no. She sneaks into Wes's room, finds his secret stash, then flushes $4,000 of drugs, and Wes is mad about it. Uh, who knows why? Wes Moore is seen in his car, rapping along to the cool songs and not caring that his grades were dropping. His mom told him to pick them back up, but he skips class a lot because one of his teachers said to him, Your ass does not belong in this class. And that school would be better without him. One time, this girl named Shani got into a fight and she got punched. Wes and the aunt go tell her to stop by saying, Next time, don't punch or your face scrunch. His friends later play the game of drugs. He and his friend Shay spray paint their Xbox gamer tags on the wall. They get caught and the police tell them not to do drugs and spray paint walls. A week later, he does it again. Chapter 5 Wes wakes up in military school, but then he goes back to sleep. Sergeant Anderson comes in and yells, but Wes ignores him and gets thrown out of bed by his entire chain of command. He remembers that his mom sent him here after his academic probation at Riverdale and accidentally punching Shaney on the lip, which he got slapped for. <laughs> Wes hated military school and he tried to run away, but was caught four times. He also hated his roommate for telling his grandma about Valley Forge, which she told his mom. One day, Sergeant Austin TX goes to Wes's room and gives him a map for him to sneak out that night. But then, when he tried to sneak out, the sergeant was like, Ha ha ha! It was fake. You just activated my trap card. So he was exposed, and everyone laughed at him, which made him cry. <laughs> Colonel Battagliagli tries to tell his mom to take him back, but she was like, We already gave up so much. Wes then meets Cadet Captain Ty Hill, and that he gets respect unlike the drug dealers. The other Westmore is good on the streets and also in the sheets. In other words, he has the street smarts and he has lots of girlfriends. He meets this girl named Alicia and she gets pregnant because he was silly and didn't wrap his willy. He denies it until he tells Tony, who, had, who also had a kid. Alicia hoped Wes could raise the kid and be a happy family. But Wes was like, I'm getting revenge on my dad by not being a responsible one. And he gets a new girl. Her boyfriend shows up and beats him up. Then he calls in the squ his squad strike team and shoots him. Then he runs back home but gets arrested. Chapter 6 Woody barely made it to graduation. Wes, on the other hand, when he got out from six months of prison, re-enrolled but dropped out again when his kid was born. Not being able to support himself, he lives with his nice aunt Nicey, who doesn't know about his drug operation. He had a huge one. One day, a suspicious guy in a hood came over to him and was like, Yo, let me get some drugs, boy. He was like, Hmm, this probably is the FBI, but hey, why not give him what he wants? Then, of course, he was arrested. Westmore led his own platoon and changed a lot. He likes military school and got scholarships. He wanted to be drafted to the NBA, but his uncle told him not to bank everything. He received a letter from Justin, his friend, that Shea got arrested and his mom got cancer. So he is a good son and he cares for her. He missed home. One time, Wes and Dalio go to get some stromboli. A guy claiming to be the Colonel and Base's son starts harassing them. He tried to hit them with a car and some guy calls him the neighbor word and throws a rock at Wes. They both run back to campus the way that Wes got lost when he tried to run away in the beginning. Chapter 7 At military school, Westmore jumps off a plane with instructors to become a paratrooper. After he was like, hey, I should join the army, and did. He also liked learning. He talked about how Colin Powell said the army was the democratic ideal and gave a fair chance to find your purpose in life. He also attended junior college at Valley Forge and became a lieutenant in the army. Back on the plane, surrounded by the other trainees, he asked God to protect him and jumped out of the plane feeling peace and gratitude. Cheryl, his current girlfriend, was a drug addict lying on the couch. 
Wes knew that she stole the drugs from him and was tired of all the bad stuff in the community. So he goes to his friend Levi, who got out of drugs, and was like, you gotta help me. He's pointed to the job corps and joins it. He ends up excelling academically, he gets his GED within one month. Proud of his achievement, he frames it. He turns his life around 180 degrees and does carpentry. But oh no, Cheryl is doing drugs again. Oh no, I need to pay my child support. Oh no, I need to support my children. I don't have that kind of money. Then he turns 180 degrees again and starts making crack. <laughs> Chapter 8. The other Westmore's mother is watching the news about four men who robbed a jewelry store and shot a cop. That sucks. But then she sees Wes and Tony are the suspects. Oh no. The police then come to her house, search it, and interviews the rest of the family. The fun police then crash the nice Aunt Nicey's daughter's wedding questioning the people in the attendee's car, reminding them about the reward for turning in Wes and Tony. Then, they prank them by arresting the driver because of not having a proper permit. Meanwhile, Wes and Tony are hiding to their uncle's house in Philadelphia. While getting food, they notice a suspicious cop car. Tony said he was going out, but Wes didn't hear the door close. Hmm, something isn't right. So he goes down to check and gets jumped by cops from like three different states. When in court, they try to keep their innocence, but found guilty and both got sent to prison for life. At least it wasn't two lives in prison. Wes Moore is talking with Mayor Shamoke and is doing an internship with him. Wes's advisor in college suggests applying to John Hopkins College, but thinks he won't fit in. He meets the assistant to the director of admissions who encourages them to apply. Wes is scared about his low SAT scores. He gets in and gets a scholarship. He thinks back to all the people in the Bronx who didn't have this chance. With this great power came big responsibility to help the less fortunate. He also went to South Africa to study culture and reconciliation. He observed the segregation and how Baltimore and the Bronx reminded him of it, but didn't compare it to the post-apartheid. He stays with Mama, and she tells him about the history and culture of South Africa, and how her husband was a freedom fighter. She asks how she can be at peace, and she says she forgives because Mandela said to. Soon he starts to feel at home in South Africa. While walking through the town, he focuses on how he will graduate soon. While Zinzi is going through the initiation into manhood, Wes reflects that the challenges he grew up with are similar to those in South Africa. In South Africa, manhood is celebrated, while in America, men are feared. And that's all, folks.